Hey everyone, I just wanted to give you some tips on warming up. I think warming up should be just that, like just warm up. You're not trying to practice anything, you're just trying to get ready to practice. And I think sometimes we take warming up too intensely and start practicing way too soon. So we're just trying to get motions getting started, getting the rebound as much as possible, just trying to get a feel of how our bodies are feeling, how the drum feels, how the sticks feel at the time, and just trying to get more familiar with the instrument before we actually start practicing, okay? So one thing I like to do is structure my warm-up in such a way that I tackle each technical exercise or technical ability that I'm gonna need for that day. And if you structure it this way, I think it'll really help you a lot. So if you look at the PDF that I created, we'll find several different things. We have, in the beginning, just stroke types. Only stroke types. So we have full strokes, down strokes, tap strokes, and up strokes. And if we find an exercise maybe in stick control that you can focus on those stroke types specifically for maybe a minute or so, then it'll really help you when you actually perform the piece. And you'll find too, in some of the exercises, we have very quick changes between stroke types. And this is just to get your hands accustomed to the reaction that you'll need to perform a very fast subido dynamic change or even a quick pattern that you might have, okay? So number five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 are all based on reactionary motions that you'll need for subido motions or whatever, okay? And then we have number 11, which just focus on continuous motion between the hands. And it's a very, very classic eight on the hand pattern with a 16th note pattern in between, okay? So that's just getting your hands accustomed to playing with each other, just getting the motion between the hands consistent and fluid as possible, okay? So if you find a different exercise that accomplishes that, you can insert it there as well. And again, you'll find that this PDF is very interchangeable. There's very little in this PDF that you can't switch off with maybe a stick control exercise, page one, or maybe accents and rebounds, developing dexterity. It's very fluid and it should be fluid. Uh, you'll find sometimes maybe one exercise is inappropriate for that day. You need to insert something else. Like this should be a very fluid warm up for, you, for your practice routines or even a concert that you might have. Or maybe you have to focus on a different technique for longer time, so you have to devote more time to something. It's very fluid and it should be, okay? And as you go on, now we're going into rebound strokes on number 12. Now, the way I do rebound strokes, I try to make them as open as possible. And so when I warm up, I really exaggerate that. So what I tend to do for double strokes is to practice inverted doubles. And some people might not really like that, but if that doesn't work for you, definitely try to take a signature exercise or, or something else that applies there, that you can practice double strokes. Maybe it's a Swiss Army triplet, or maybe it's something different. But you wanna find something that tackles double strokes and make them as open as possible. Then next we have triple strokes. And some people might not do a triple stroke bounce roll, but I, I do, so I incorporate that into my warm up. If you do more sixteenths or any other density, then find an exercise that focuses on that density and try to play it as open as possible. You want it to be as relaxed, open, and fluid as possible so you can feel everything that's going on and just get a feel for it, okay? And then lastly, with the rebound strokes, we have buzzes. And I tend to do a very classic buzz exercise that you'll see number 14. And it's very classic. You just accent separate 16th notes within a different measure in a piano dynamic. Very chill, very soft, just very meditative. You don't want to get too aggressive. Just be relaxed, let the drum and sticks do the work, and just let it be fluid. You just want to get a feel for it. Again, you're not practicing, you're just getting a feel for it, okay? Then, the cool thing about number 15, these exercises can be whatever you want, okay? So depending on the day, if you need an exercise that focuses more on flams, um, you'll notice in one of the exercises that deals with stroke types, it really resembles the motion of a flam. It's a very open flam. So if you need something specifically for flams, insert it in number 15. 
Me personally, I like to work on the molar stroke. So number 15 is a molar stroke exercise where I accent the ends and beginnings of the 16th patterns with different hands. Another optional exercise you can do is to take something from a piece that you're doing that day. So the piece that I took the optional exercise from was Scheherazade. We have the very intense crescendo to a very quick pianissimo stroke pattern in the 16th notes, okay? So I took an exercise and just kind of developed it for that specific situation, okay? So if you have something in a piece or, per, or a performance that you have to do and you need to focus on one single aspect of it and you need to warm up to it, just make something and put it in number 15. And you should be able to get through the warm up. If you do each exercise for a minute, it will only take you 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops. It won't take that long. Just a very simple structure that you can follow that will help get your performance and get your hands ready for the performance. Okay? So I hope this helps and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.